there are some instructions for the toastmasters and these are the types of difficult audience that are there which is one type is the talker which is uh, we don't need to say who they are we will understand during the speech <laughs> the talker always likes to talk and always presents his or her opinion and comments on everything that someone says then there is the interrupter the interrupter is someone uh, who have something to contribute to the discussion but prefer to do it only when someone else is talking so always interrupt somebody else then there is the chatterer he likes to make side talks and side comments while the person is speaking uh, then there is the arguer the person who always feel obliged to share his extensive knowledge with others not able to understand the real thing and keeps on arguing and then there is a silent type who doesn't like to participate in any kind of discussion so these are the kind of people which are there in the crowd and we have already assigned roles to individuals who will be doing that during the speech so yes thank back you. to you thank you to Toastmasters to BTS and also applause to BTM Sundaraman Nano Remo Nano Remo am i saying it right BTM Sundaraman <laughs> <laughs> Nano Remo Nano Remo Nano Remo Good morning Toastmasters good morning, morning. so when i say the word december what comes to your mind December, what comes to your mind? Christmas. 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 Thank you for your input, sir. So, <laughs> so no shave, right? No shave actually is a kind of initiative to create. I think many people have grown beard during November, but some of them may not know for what purpose they are growing beard. So, it is primarily to create an awareness on it's cancer. Not women. No, what is the? Uh, no, I'll come there. I'll come there. I'll come there. Yes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> because you are talking about men. No, I am not talking. I just gave an example how November, when I say November, what comes to your mind. And when I, uh, Satish told that uh, no shave month, I was trying to explain. So the topic is about a similar initiative called Nano Raimo. So this Nano Raimo is an initiative to encourage writers to write a novel in 30 days. Actually, it was started by a person, a writer called Chris Batty. He started. Chris Batty, he started uh, uh, this moment uh, by 1999. Actually, when he, he said that in one month we this have a relation with the Modi also. No? <laughs> <laughs> when, when, definitely, I would not have chosen a Toastmaster Shini as my evaluator. <laughs> So this is my evaluator, it is not about body, it is nano, not nano. Right. So here he started a moment where people can start writing a book for the, in 30 days. So initially when he started, just 20 people started, uh, joined uh, this uh, movement. Within a month, almost 5,000 people, within one year, 5,000 people joined. By 2015, almost 400,000 people have joined. I don't know the headcount, how many people have joined us and did. But so many people participate across the world. How many books they have released so far after this 4 lakh people? So I'll come to that a little okay. later. So primarily this is the emblem of a nano remo movement. So the, uh, the, there are basic ground rules like uh, Toastmasters, uh, the pathways. <laughs> <laughs> Shankar, you want to share something? <laughs> <laughs> Right. So here the rules are simple. There are basically five ground rules. So we have to start writing on 1st of November and end by 30th November, not before that. And the second one is, no one is allowed to start early and then try to add on that. Then third one is, what you are right, releasing second book in uh, the second part of the year and first book in February. So how do you write this November? And no, this is, this is only for one book. This is only for one book. Thank you for uh, you know, asking that clarification. Uh, 50,000 books, 50,000 words you have to write. So primarily this is targeting people to write novels, but of course people are also and, uh, we were liberating this framework to write non-fiction items. So actually I started uh, uh, using this platform to write a non-fiction item. And uh, 
you can prepare do everything before November first, but now you are writing should start on November first. Uh, primarily like a Pathways uh, portal, this also allows you to leverage this portal. This portal you can go and register yourself and then you can create a profile and uh, you can also have the cover page of your book uh, uh, made available in the book. You can add buddies so that your buddies can review what you are doing, the rate of progress or you can, they can comment on the quality of your writing. So you can have a conversation. So it is, a, it is beginning yet on the social platform. And also you have a, on an everyday basis you can update how many words you are writing per day. So this also has got a, uh, several mechanisms where you can track your progress. For example, so on a daily basis you have to enter how many words you have entered. So to write uh, 50,000 words of a book uh, in 30 days, the average words per day expected is 1,667 words. So based on that it has given a projected graph. So what is your progress, the actual versus budgeted. So you can monitor your progress and one day if you are not very creative, you are unable to come out with number of words, then the next day you can make up. So as long as you are going almost in the projected uh, budgeted line, then you should feel happy. So the uh, ultimate end is So just throwing in 1700 words, uh, how would this be coherent with the four teams? No, this is, this is subjective. So they are not monitoring your quality of writing or how it is well aligned with your So that is where it is up to you as an author. You don't want to write 50,000 people. Then those 400,000 uh, people who wrote uh, the books are not that much qualitative then. <laughs> <laughs> 400,000 people until 2015 they wrote the books. Uh, no, actually, actually the, the initiative is not to endorse the writers. So it is up to the writers to bother about the quality. So it is almost something similar to Toastmasters. If I give an example of Toastmasters, anyone joining a Toastmaster club can become a distinguished Toastmaster within three years because you have to be an officer for one term and you have to be an officer <coughs> for a district for one year. So within three years, you can become a distinguished Toastmaster. There is no pass or fail. Your evaluator is not saying that you have to repeat your project, though you can recommend it. You can go ahead with your project and within three years, you can call yourself a distinguished Toastmaster. You can also become uh, saying that I have done twice uh, uh, the DTM project twice or thrice. You, it is up to you, you are answerable to yourself. And people will talk about your quality uh, at the back. So it is up to you to design. So this is only giving you a platform. It is up to you to write the quality content. So primarily, uh, this gives a kind of pressure, but uh, the pressure is put by yourself. So many people say that uh, they like to perform better under pressure, but when they, when you interact with them, in reality they say, no, no, I don't want pressure. So they will only quote that I want better under pressure. But uh, here it is a, some kind of a self-pressure. So if you are taking a commitment to write a book within a month, it is something like a self-pressure, then that's where you will be excelling. So like uh, pathways, so whenever you complete a level, you get a badge, here also you get badge. So when you accomplish, uh, 10,000 words or 5,000 words when you receive reach milestones, so you get badges. And well, uh, you know, even on a daily basis, if you are able to accomplish the daily target of 1,067 words, again you are given badges. So these are all some kind of uh, indirect incentives you to write the project. So beyond this framework, so I will also like to. Uh, share my experience. I actually, like Toastmasters, I am also part of another organization called Professional Speakers Association of <coughs> India, in short, the PSAI. Here, we felt that uh, speakers, if they want to increase your credibility, you have to write a book. If you have a book to your credit, then people will give weightage to you, and uh, preferably, if the book is in aligning with what is your favorite topic, then it will add a lot of credibility. So, in that context, so that is where I have chosen. Uh, design thinking for public speaking as my project or my book because uh, most of my speeches or my workshops revolve around design thinking and also I'm passionate about public speaking. So normally design thinking is uh, focusing on developing that, uh, de developing uh, a product or a service but design thinking can also be applied for public speaking because here also we talk about empathy and here also we are talking about coming out with innovative ideas and the people have to switch on their camera and to switch off their mic. 
the, the, the uh, audio portion they have to mute it, but they have to enable that video portion. So it gives a feeling that we are all sitting in the writing in a room. So everyone will be watching others. Every one of us will be watching others, so that will give a kind of a peer pressure. When someone is seriously writing, I should not uh, look idle, so I should also write idle. And uh, we also have an uh, indirect uh, what is that, conviction saying that, that for one particular hour, we don't get disturbed. So we don't get distracted for the whole 60 minutes, we want to uh, be focused and we have to write at least 1500 words. So that is the goal and so far it is a yes sir. But, uh, creativity right, it happens for different people at different points in time in the day, right? So some people are more creative in the evenings. So what, 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 what is the rational behind choosing a 5 a.m.? You are absolutely right. In fact, uh, we, though we have around uh, 30 members, all of them, they are not willing to join in the morning. So one is they are not creative and they are, don't get up early. And they have a, they have a household chores. So they don't want to do that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, right, you are right. So that's why some of us, uh, they felt that the yeah, evening slot will be helpful. Some of them have chosen evening slot or night slot. But morning slot, people are regularly coming around 10 to 12 people regularly come and join. And starting from 1st uh, November, we are quite active. And I am really happy with that kind of progress. I never knew about this tool. So even as a Toastmaster, if you want to compile all your speeches and try to align with the theme and come out with your, uh, your own book, this will be a wonderful platform. So I think we should all leverage it. So not only that, like our Ovation Conference, uh, the PSA is conference, second annual conference is happening in Delhi by 1st and 2nd of uh, uh, February. So by 30th November, if our first draft version is ready, then the entire month of December we can do all our editing, 15 days for editing, revisiting our content and within 15 days we want to come out with publishing. So writing a book is different, editing a book is different, publishing is a third aspect. So uh, one of us we are coordinating the self publishing house so that all books will be ready and uh, by 1st February it can be released and uh, launched in a grand manner in New Delhi in first, uh, on 1st February. So this is what I want to share with you today and uh, uh, I leverage that platform. Personally, I felt that this is a wonderful initiative and if you want your creative juices to come out and if you want a book to your credit, then leverage NanoRaimo. Thank you for being a wonderful, distracting audience. <laughs>